In an old hospital on the outskirts of town, there's a hallway that's rarely used, rumored to be haunted. Jason, a new security guard, was on his first night shift. His colleagues warned him about the eerie occurrences in that part of the building, but skeptical and unafraid, he dismissed their stories as mere superstitions. As midnight approached, Jason started his routine patrol. The dimly lit corridors, with their flickering lights, created unsettling shadows. He heard about the hospital's history of patients who vanished mysteriously and doctors who went mad. Laughing off the tales, he entered the neglected wing. The air grew colder and a sense of unease settled over him. Jason checked the rooms one by one, finding nothing but old abandoned medical equipment. Then he heard a soft whisper from the end of the hallway. Thinking it was just the wind, he continued, until he realized the whispering grew louder, turning into murmurs of distress. He reached the source, a sealed off room, where the murmuring stopped abruptly. As he examined the lock, the temperature dropped sharply, and his radio crackled to life with a frantic voice calling for help sounding distressingly close. Jason, now alarmed, tried to respond, but there was only static. Turning to leave, he found his exit blocked by a shadowy figure in a hospital gown, its face obscured. Frozen in fear, Jason could only watch as the figure pointed towards the sealed room, then vanished. The whispering resumed urging him to look inside. As Jason hesitated, the story breaks, leaving the mystery of the room and the shadowy figure unexplored, setting the stage for a chilling continuation. Compelled by a mix of fear and curiosity, Jason approached the sealed room again. The whispering voices became clearer, pleading for release. He noticed the lock was old and rusted, as if it hadn't been touched for years. Gathering his courage, he broke the lock and slowly pushed the door open. Inside, the room was shrouded in darkness, the only light coming from his flickering flashlight. As he stepped in, the door slammed shut behind him, plunging him into darkness. Panicking, he tried to open it, but found it immovable. The whispering intensified surrounding him, but no source could be seen. Suddenly, the room illuminated with a ghostly glow, revealing walls covered in archaic symbols and old, faded photographs of patients, their eyes seeming to follow his every move. In the center stood an operating table, straps frayed and stained, and above it, Surgical tools hung suspended in the air, as if held by invisible hands. Jason felt a chilling breeze as the tools began to move rhythmically, mimicking the actions of a long-gone surgeon. The whispers turned into tormented screams, echoing the agony of past operations. Overcome by dread, Jason stumbled backward his eyes catching a figure in the corner, a doctor, spectral and blurred, performing surgeries on ethereal patients who writhed in silent screams. The ghostly doctor turned to Jason, his eyes hollow, voice raspy, whispering, you shouldn't have come here. The room filled with the apparitions of patients crowding around Jason their touch cold, their faces contorted in eternal pain. As he backed into a wall, the photographs began to change, showing scenes of his own past, revealing dark secrets he had buried deep within. The hospital's haunted history intertwined with his own, suggesting his arrival was no mere coincidence. The spectral figures approached closer 
their hands reaching out to him as the room spun in a malic whirl of ghostly activity. Just as the spirits were about to engulf him, the scene shifts abruptly, leaving his fate hanging in the balance as the narrative takes a darker turn, delving deeper into the hospital's cursed legacy and Jason's mysterious connection to it. In the swirling chaos, the spectral figures halted their advance as a deep, resonant bell tolled somewhere within the bowels of the hospital. The sound seemed to hold sway over the apparitions, calming the storm of spirits. The room's eerie light dimmed, and Jason found himself alone again, save for the ghostly doctor, who now appeared more defined, almost human. The doctor, his expression somber, began to narrate the tragic history of the hospital. He revealed it was built atop a site marked by tragedy, where an ancient plague had claimed countless lives. Their unquiet spirits bound to the place, the hospital, meant to be a haven of healing, had instead become a beacon for these restless souls, amplifying their torment. Jason listened, mesmerized, as the doctor spoke of his own demise, a result of his obsession with conquering death, leading to unholy experiments that blurred the boundaries between life and the afterlife. These actions had cursed the hospital, trapping both the patients and their caretakers in a perpetual loop of suffering. The narrative then shifted to Jason's own past, his reasons for working at this forsaken place. Unbeknownst to him, his lineage was intertwined with the hospital's darkest days. His ancestors had been among the founders, and with them, they carried a burden, a pact made with the shadowy forces beneath the hospital, promising their descendants in exchange for prosperity. As the doctor vanished, leaving Jason to process the revelations, the room began to transform. Walls crumbled away, revealing a labyrinth of underground chambers, each echoing with the remnants of past horrors. Driven by a newfound purpose, Jason ventured deeper, guided by an inexplicable knowledge of the path. He descended into the catacombs, each step taking him further into the heart of the curse. Whispers of the dead filled the air, telling tales of betrayal, lost souls, and the origins of the hospital's curse. Jason realized that the hospital was a nexus for the supernatural, a place where the veil between worlds was thin and where he might find the key to ending the cycle of suffering. As he navigated the ancient corridors, strange artifacts and forgotten relics hinted at a ritual, one that could either cleanse the blight or doom him become part of the hospital's legacy of horror. The path led him to an ornate door, behind which lay the heart of the curse, the source of the hospital's power and pain. Just as Jason reached for the door, prepared to face whatever lay beyond, the scene cuts abruptly, leaving the mystery of the hospital's true nature and Jason's role in its cursed history tantalizingly unresolved, setting the stage for further exploration of its dark corridors and hidden truths. Jason's hand trembled as he pushed open the ornate door, revealing a vast, shadowy chamber. Inside, a mix of modern and ancient medical equipment surrounded a large stone altar at the center, upon which lay a tome bound in tattered skin its pages filled with arcane symbols that pulsed with a sickly glow. As he approached the altar, the air thickened, and the shadows seemed to coalesce into the shapes of the tormented souls he had seen before. 
these spirits circled the chamber, their whispers now forming a chorus that resonated with the room's dark energy. The tome beckoned, its pages flipping as if caught in a breeze, stopping on a ritual that promised to sever the ties binding the spirits to the hospital. Jason, driven by a mix of desperation and resolve, began to recite the incantations. As he spoke, the ground shook, and a spectral wind howled through the chamber. The spirits intensified their swirling dance, becoming more agitated and desperate. The hospital itself seemed to groan under the weight of the ritual, its walls bleeding shadows that crept towards the center of the room. The ritual required elements tied to the hospital's history, personal belongings of the founding members, relics of past tragedies, and a sacrifice willing to bear the curse's burden. Jason realized the latter referred to him, a descendant of the founders, bound by blood to the hospital's fate. As he continued the ritual, the chamber's atmosphere grew increasingly oppressive. The boundary between the physical and the spiritual world blurring. The spirits, now frenzied, converged on Jason, their forms merging into a maelstrom of ethereal energy. In the eye of this storm stood a figure, the original founder of the hospital, his appearance both regal and terrifying. This apparition spoke in a voice that echoed through the ages, revealing the true extent of the pact. It was not merely for prosperity, but for immortality, achieved through the suffering and death within the hospital's walls. The hospital was a crucible for a darker ascension, one that Jason could complete or condemn to oblivion. With the ritual nearing completion, the chamber's energy reached a fever pitch. The Founder's spirit offered Jason a choice. Join him in eternal dominion over death, or banish the spirits and end the cycle, sacrificing himself to ensure the hospital's dark legacy would not continue. As Jason weighed his decision, the chamber quaked violently cracks spreading across the floor, revealing glimpses of the abyss below. The shadows thickened, ready to consume everything in their path, as the boundary between life and death thinned to a mere thread. The tome's pages fluttered wildly, signaling the imminent climax of the ritual. Jason stood at the precipice of a decision would echo through eternity. The fates of countless souls and the very essence of the hospital hanging in the balance. With the forces of the past converging upon him, the scene cuts abruptly, leaving Jason's ultimate choice and the consequent fate of the hospital shrouded in mystery perfectly poised for the next chapter in this haunting narrative. As the chamber's energy spiraled out of control, the air crackled with power, and the very fabric of reality seemed to warp and tear. Jason, standing at the altar, felt the weight of history pressing down upon him. The whispered voices of the past and present merging into a deafening roar. The tome before him glowed brighter, its ancient pages now seething with eldritch light, casting eerie shadows that danced across the walls. The founding spirit, now almost corporeal in its intensity, spoke of a world beyond, a realm where death held no sway and pain was the currency of power. He offered Jason a place at his side to rule this realm as gods among men, their will unchallenged, their power unbounded.
but amidst the tempest of voices, Jason heard the softer, pained whispers of the trapped souls, pleading for release, for an end to their eternal torment. His mind raced, images of the hospital's bloody history flashing before his eyes, each moment a testament to the suffering that had fueled its dark legacy. As the ritual neared its zenith, the room illuminated with a spectral light, casting stark shadows that twisted and writhed like living things. The ground beneath Jason's feet cracked open, revealing a chasm that led to an unknown abyss, pulsating with the cries of the damned. From this abyss, tendrils of darkness snaked upward wrapping around the altar, seeking to claim the tome and Jason with it. Driven by a newfound resolve, Jason made his choice. Ignoring the Founder's promises of power, he focused on the Spirit's pleas. With each word of the ritual he recited, he wove his own intentions into the fabric of the spell, aiming to reverse the curse and free the trapped souls, even if it meant his own end. The chamber reacted violently, the walls shaking as if in protest, and the abyss below howled with fury. The spirits surged forward, their forms becoming more distinct, faces etched with sorrow and hope. They encircled Jason, their presence lending him strength as he completed the incantations. As the final word left his lips, a blinding light engulfed the room. The shadows recoiled, the abyss screamed, and the air itself seemed to shatter. The boundary between life and death, so perilously thin, now shattered, releasing a torrent of spiritual energy. Jason stood at the heart of the storm, the tome's light enveloping him, linking him with every soul the hospital had claimed. In this moment, he was a conduit for their release, a beacon for their ascension. The Founder's spirit, now howling in rage and despair, fought against the inevitable, trying to maintain its grip on the physical world. The scene is suspended in this climactic instant, with the outcome of Jason's decision hanging in the balance. Will the hospital's dark legacy finally be broken? Or will the Founder's spirit prevail? The Chamber, a nexus of ancient power and modern tragedy, holds the answer, waiting to reveal its secrets in the next turn of the tale. As the blinding light began to wane, the Chamber's tumultuous energy started to settle revealing the aftermath of Jason's monumental decision. The once oppressive atmosphere of the room lightened, the shadows retreating to the corners as if banished by the dawn's first light. The abyss beneath the cracked floor ceased its howling, the tendrils of darkness receding like the tide, leaving behind a silence that was both ominous and serene. In the center of the chamber, where the altar once stood, Jason remained upright, his body now a conduit between the physical realm and the spiritual. The spectral light enveloped him, pulsating with each beat of his heart, binding the freed souls to him, their faces flickering across his visage in a rapid, ghostly montage. The founding spirit, his form diminished and flickering, appeared defeated yet defiant. His once powerful presence now seemed to waver, as if struggling to maintain its hold in the physical world. With a resentful glance at Jason, he whispered threats of vengeance and warnings of the curse's true depth, hinting that the battle may be over, but the war was far from one. Around them, 
the chamber began to transform. The ancient stone walls, etched with centuries of suffering, crumbled away to reveal a more modern setting. The hospital, or what remained of it, was shifting back to reality the supernatural elements receding, leaving behind the tangible remnants of its haunted past. Jason, now released from the altar's grip, stumbled forward, his senses overwhelmed by the transition. The tome, its purpose fulfilled, lay closed and silent on the ground, its cover no longer pulsating with eldritch light, but rather appearing as an ordinary, albeit ancient, book. As he regained his bearings, Jason noticed the spirits of the hospital's past inhabitants beginning to fade, their forms dissolving into motes of light, drifting upwards and vanishing like embers in the night sky. Their faces, once marked by anguish and despair, now seemed peaceful their release finally granted. Despite the apparent calm, an underlying tension filled the air, a reminder of the Founder's final words. The hospital, though purged of its most malignant presences, still held secrets, layers of history not yet uncovered, and dark corners where lesser evils might lurk. As Jason explored the now quiet halls, the reality of his situation set in. He was intrinsically linked to the hospital, part of its history and possibly its future. The burden of the curse, although lifted, had left its mark on him, imbuing him with an acute awareness of the supernatural realm that bordered on the precognitive. The hospital, standing at the threshold between eras was a nexus of untold stories, each hallway and room a chapter yet to be explored. Jason, with his newfound connection to the place, felt an obligation to unearth these stories, to prevent the resurgence of the darkness that once pervaded its walls. As he ventured deeper into the hospital, the light from the chamber behind him dimmed, casting long shadows that seemed to watch and whisper, hinting at the unresolved mysteries and latent threats that lay within. The scene fades with Jason stepping into the unknown, the hospital's eerie silence promising that this story is far from concluded, setting the stage for further exploration into its haunted legacy. In the newfound quiet of the hospital, Jason navigated the corridors with a sense of purpose, each step taking him deeper into the bowels of the building. The once oppressive atmosphere had lifted, but the air still thrummed with an undercurrent of unresolved mysteries. The walls, stripped of their haunting visages, now revealed hidden doors and concealed passages, whispering of forgotten tales and buried secrets. As he explored, Jason encountered remnants of the hospital's past, abandoned rooms filled with old patient records, their pages yellowed with age, and wards where the echoes of laughter and cries melded into a haunting symphony. Each room told a story of hope and despair, of healing and hurt, painting a complex picture of the hospital's legacy. He came across an old library, its shelves buckling under the weight of medical tomes and journals. Dust motes danced in the slanting light as Jason's fingers traced the spines of the books each one a relic of the hospital's storied history. It was here that he discovered a hidden panel, revealing a set of diaries belonging to the hospital's founding doctors. These writings chronicled the early days of the institution, 
shedding light on their noble aspirations, which had slowly decayed into the madness that Jason had witnessed firsthand. Deep within the library, Jason found a map outlining the original structure of the hospital, including sections long forgotten and sealed off. His curiosity peaked. He decided to follow the map to these hidden areas, seeking to understand the full scope of the hospital's history and its descent into darkness. The map led him to a decrepit wing, untouched by time, where the air felt thick with the presence of the past. Here, the walls themselves seemed to breathe, pulsing with the memories of a thousand souls. In this secluded part of the hospital, the line between the physical and the supernatural blurred even further. With phantasmal apparitions flickering at the edge of Jason's vision, leading him onward. As Jason's hand inched closer to the malevolent book, the shadows around the table grew denser, their forms more agitated. The air thrummed with power, a palpable force that seemed to push against him, warning him away. Yet, driven by a desire to understand, and possibly end the cycle of horror. He pressed on, fingers brushing the book's cover. The moment he made contact, the room trembled, and the shadows recoiled, as if his touch had unleashed something long contained. The book flew open, pages flipping rapidly as if caught in a storm, before settling on a page that glowed with an eerie, otherworldly light. The text, written in a language that twisted the eyes and mind, seemed to shift and change, coalescing into words that Jason could comprehend. It spoke of the hospital's inception, not as a place of healing, but as a beacon for a dark and ancient entity, drawn to the suffering and despair of the ill and dying. As Jason read, the shadows at the table solidified into distinct figures, specters of the hospital's original founders. They were locked in a perpetual council, bound to the room by their pact with the entity. Their eyes, hollow yet burning with an unholy light, turned to Jason, recognizing him as both kin and interloper. The specters began to speak in unison, their voices a dissonant chorus that filled the room. They recounted the true history of the hospital, how each brick and beam was consecrated through ritual, embedding the structure itself with the power to bridge the mortal realm and the abyss. The entity, they revealed, fed on the cycle of life and death growing stronger with each soul that passed within the hospital's walls. Jason, with the book in hand, realized that his family's legacy was not just linked to the hospital, but entwined with the very entity that gave it power. The specters offered him a place among them to embrace his heritage and take his rightful place in the Eternal Council, or to resist and potentially sever the ties that bound the entity to the physical world. As the specter spoke, the chamber began to change, the walls fading away to reveal a vision of the hospital as it could be, a nexus of power and knowledge, where the barrier between life and death was but a thin veil easily traversed Yet, this vision was tainted by the suffering and horror that fueled it, a perpetual cycle of pain and darkness. Torn between his innate desire to end the suffering and the temptation of unfathomable knowledge and power, Jason found himself at a crossroads. The book seemed to pulse in his hands, 
its pages a gateway to forbidden knowledge, but also a tool that could potentially undo the entity's influence. Outside the chamber, the hospital lay silent, a stark contrast to the storm of spiritual and temporal energy raging within. The entity, sensing the potential threat to its existence, began to stir from its ancient slumber, its influence seeping through the hospital's corridors, seeking to quell the rebellion before it could begin. The scene fades with Jason standing at the heart of the conflict, the hospital's fate and his own hanging in the balance. The narrative pauses, the outcome uncertain, as the struggle for the soul of the hospital and the battle against the ancient darkness at its core remains unresolved, awaiting the next chapter in this haunting saga. The entity, now fully aware of the threat Jason posed, manifested its power more directly, warping the reality of the hospital. The once stable walls of the chamber began to bleed shadows, while the air thickened into an almost tangible darkness. The Spectral Council of Founders, their forms now more pronounced, watched with a mixture of fear and anticipation, aware that their eternal pact could be unraveled by the actions of their descendant. Jason, holding the book, felt its power surge as the entity's presence grew stronger. The text shimmered with a sinister light offering up spells and incantations that could either bind the entity further to this world or banish it, risking the destruction of the hospital and everyone connected to it. The weight of his decision was palpable, as the fate of countless souls, both living and dead, hung in the balance. As he pondered his next move, the chamber transformed into a gateway between realms, the walls dissolving into vistas of otherworldly landscapes that were both beautiful and terrifying. These were the domains of the entity, realms shaped by centuries of pain and suffering harvested from the hospital. The founders spoke again, their voices a cacophony of desperation and greed urging Jason to accept his destiny and join them in their eternal vigil over the entity's domain. They promised him power over life and death, a chance to be part of the entity's grand design. However, within the swirling chaos of the chamber, a softer voice emerged, a remnant of the hospital's original purpose of healing and care. It whispered of redemption and release, of ending the cycle of suffering and allowing the souls trapped within the hospital to find peace. This voice, almost lost among the clamor of the entity and the founders, resonated with the remaining shred of humanity in Jason. Compelled by this glimmer of hope, Jason delved into the book searching for a way to counteract the entity's influence. His eyes were drawn to a passage describing a ritual of severance, one that could separate the entity from the physical world, but at a great cost. The ritual required a sacrifice, a life willingly given, imbued with the blood of the founders, to break the eternal pact. The hospital around them now a battleground of spiritual forces, echoed with the cries of the damned and the hopeful alike. Jason, understanding what was required of him, prepared to make the ultimate sacrifice to free the spirits and end the entity's reign. But as he readied himself for the ritual, the entity, sensing its imminent threat, unleashed its fury chamber shook violently. The 
ethereal landscapes outside its boundaries, roiling with storm-like ferocity. The founders, bound to the entity's will, screamed in protest, their spectral forms blurring into frenzied, shadowy wraiths. Jason, amidst this turmoil, began the ritual, reciting the ancient words that would either free or damn them all. The air crackled with energy, a storm of spiritual and elemental forces converging upon the chamber. The scene cuts here, leaving Jason in the eye of the supernatural storm. His fate and that of the hospital's ensnared souls suspended in a moment of intense anticipation, setting the stage for the next pivotal chapter in this dark and unfolding narrative. He followed these spectral guides to a sealed vault, its door etched with symbols that resonated with the tome's arcane script. A cold draft emanated from the cracks around the door, carrying whispers of ancient rites and forgotten packs. With a sense of inevitable confrontation, Jason opened the vault revealing a chamber filled with artifacts and relics, each imbued with dark energies and secrets yet to be uncovered. The chamber housed a large circular table at its center, surrounded by chairs that seemed to be occupied by shadowy figures, their outlines shimmering in the dim light. On the table, lay a collection of objects that appeared to be focal points for the room's concentrated energies. A set of surgical instruments that gleamed unnaturally. A series of jars containing unidentifiable substances that pulsed with a sickly light. And a large, closed book, similar in appearance to the tome, but radiating a far more malevolent aura. As Jason approached the table, the shadows in the chairs seemed to lean forward, as if anticipating his next move. The air grew colder, and the faint sound of chanting echoed through the room. The words indecipherable, yet filled with urgent malice. The scene fades as Jason stands before the table, his hand hovering over the malevolent book. The hospital secrets tantalizingly close, yet shielded by an air of impending danger. The narrative pauses here, poised on the brink of new revelations and the awakening of deeper horrors within the hospital's haunted halls. As Jason uttered the ritual's ancient incantations, the chamber became the epicenter of a cosmic maelstrom. The entity in a desperate bid to maintain its grasp on the mortal realm, summoned the darkest energies of its domains, causing the visions beyond the chamber to twist into scenes of unimaginable horror and despair. The air was filled with the screams of the tormented souls, their pain amplified by the entity's fear of oblivion. The spectral founders, now mere puppets of the entity, attempted to thwart Jason's efforts, their forms stretching and distorting into grotesque parodies of their human selves. They launched themselves at Jason in a frenzied assault, but were repelled by an invisible force emanating from the book, which protected him as he continued the ritual. With each word spoken, the bond between the entity and the hospital weakened, the walls of the chamber cracking and splintering, revealing the crumbling facade of the once majestic hospital. The shadows, once thick and oppressive, began to dissipate, their darkness receding as the entity's hold on the world waned. In the midst of the chaos, Jason's mind was flooded with visions of the hospital's past. 
its inception filled with hope and promise, gradually corrupted by greed and a thirst for forbidden knowledge. He saw the countless lives touched by the hospital's dual legacy of healing and harm. The energy of their experiences fueling the ritual, lending power to his words. The entity, now fully aware of its peril, unleashed its final gambit, a surge of pure malice aimed at shattering Jason's resolve and breaking the ritual. The chamber shook violently, the ground beneath Jason cracking open to reveal a gaping maw that led to the entity's realm, a place where reality and nightmare merged. From this abyss, the entity itself began to emerge, its form too alien and horrific for the human mind to comprehend fully. Jason, standing on the brink of the abyss, felt the tug of the entity's power, its promises of immortality and dominion echoing in his mind. Yet, driven by a desire to end the cycle of suffering, he pressed on, the words of the ritual flowing from him like a torrent, each syllable striking against the entity like a physical blow. The battle between Jason and the entity, a clash of wills and powers beyond mortal comprehension, reached its zenith. The chamber, now barely holding to the physical world, was a nexus of colliding realities where the outcome of their struggle could tip the balance in favor of light or darkness. As the ritual neared its completion, the fabric of reality itself seemed to fray. The boundaries between the hospital and the entity's domain blurring into non-existence. The air was thick with the power of untold centuries. The accumulated energy of life and death, healing and suffering, all converging on this singular point in time and space. The scene holds at this climactic juncture, with Jason and the entity locked in their final confrontation, the fate of the hospital and its ensnared souls hanging precariously in the balance. The narrative remains poised on the edge of resolution, awaiting the next chapter to unveil the aftermath of this epic struggle. As the ritual reached its climax, the chamber's boundaries between realities crumbled, and the entity a horrifying amalgam of all the pain and suffering absorbed over the centuries, fully emerged into the physical world. Its form was a constantly shifting mass of shadows and faces, each one a soul it had consumed, their features twisted in eternal agony. Jason, standing at the epicenter of this chaos, felt the enormity of the entity's power a dark mirror to the hospital's own tortured history. Despite the overwhelming fear, a resolute calm settled over him. He understood that the ritual was more than a spell. It was a reckoning, a balance of every wrong the hospital had inflicted and every soul it had ensnared. The spectral founders, now mere echoes of their former selves, circled the abyss their essence fading as the entity's connection to the mortal realm weakened. They looked to Jason, their eyes conveying a mixture of regret and hope, silently pleading for release from their eternal bondage. With the final words of the ritual on his lips, Jason took a decisive step forward, closing the gap between himself and the entity. As he spoke the last incantation, he plunged the book into the heart of the abyss, where the entity thrashed and roared, 
a storm of pure malevolence, resisting its inevitable banishment. The book, imbued with the essence of the hospital and its countless lost souls, acted as a beacon, drawing the entity into its pages, trapping it within its own tale of horror and despair. The chamber shook violently, the air filled with a cacophony of voices as the entity was compressed into the tome, its form shrinking, its power waning, until, with a final, deafening silence, it disappeared. The aftermath was immediate and profound. The hospital, freed from the entity's grasp, began to heal. Its walls no longer weeping shadows, but standing firm and silent. The spectral founders, their connection to the entity severed, found peace at last, their forms dissolving into light, leaving behind a legacy no longer tainted by darkness. Jason, exhausted but unbroken, stood alone in the chamber, now just an ordinary room. The book lay closed at his feet, its cover blank, a simple, unremarkable object once again. He picked it up, feeling its weight, not just physical, but historical, a testament to the hospital's long and troubled past. As dawn broke, light filtered into the hospital, casting away the last shadows of the night. The building was silent, its halls empty, a relic of a bygone era. Jason, carrying the book, walked through the corridors, each step echoing in the quiet, a solitary figure leaving a place of nightmares behind. He exited the hospital, the morning sun warm on his face, a stark contrast to the darkness he had endured. Behind him, the hospital stood silent and watchful. Its legacy of horror ended. The spirits of the past, finally at rest, Jason knew that the story of the hospital was over, but its lessons, the dangers of ambition unchecked by morality, would linger. He looked back one last time, then turned away, the book under his arm a heavy reminder of the night's ordeal. As he walked into the new day, the hospital, now just an ordinary building, began to fade into the background its once ominous presence diminished, its halls quiet, waiting for time to reclaim what was left. The story concludes with the hospital's transformation from a place of unspeakable horror to one of quiet redemption, its corridors now empty, the entity and its dark legacy finally laid to rest. Jason, forever changed by the ordeal, carries forward the memory of that night, a guardian of the thin line between light and darkness.